guys, today I'm going to share with you some of my posing tips. This is intended for couples who are having their wedding photography with me or with an associate and want to get a little bit of insight into the process of what happens on the wedding day when it's time for the portrait session. What can you expect? How scary is this going to be? and just to kind of mentally prepare yourselves a little bit. Now, a lot of the couples or pretty much all of the couples that I work with are really nervous about having their photo taken and they will tell me, look, we feel really awkward. What are some things we can do to prepare? So the idea is that uh, before the start of the photo session, I normally give couples this little rundown. I give them some tips and pointers as to how they can actually get the best from their photos, things that they can do that are gonna make my job a little bit easier and that are ultimately going to bring the best results results for their wedding photography. The first thing that I always talk about, and this is the sort of guiding principle behind everything that we're doing, and that is to create a lot of connection, points of contact between you and your partner. Connection goes hand in hand with intimacy. The way that we create that feeling of romance and tenderness and connection between you and your partner is to actually create little points of physical connection, uh, as many of those as we can. To give you a tangible example of what I mean by that, let's say we're doing a kiss and you may think, well, that's a very intimate moment anyway, but the more points of connection that we make, the more intimate we can make that one moment of a kiss. If we go in with our partner and we just kiss at the lips like that, there's nothing really going on with the rest of the body. So what we're gonna do is is actually put our whole body into this kiss. So we can make connection not only at the lips, we can also put our, our, you know, our kind of legs, our lower halves in there so that this is making connection. We also can bring our stomachs in so that our tummy and our partner's tummy are touching and they're really close and there's no gaps between us. And then we can also, as a third thing, put our arms around our partner as well so that now we're making connection at the lips, tummies, maybe our legs as well, and also our arms when we bring our partner close and we squeeze them close to us like that. One thing to remember with kissing photos is to make it a very, like a longer kiss, so not just a peck on the lips, because obviously it's gonna be harder to catch something that lasts like a second. Actually, the moment that I like to capture is the one right before your face is touched. So let's say I'm going in with my partner and my partner's face is right here. Instead of kind of swooshing our faces together, I really like that moment when your eyes are closed and you're going in for that kiss and you're making it really slow as you bring your faces together and your lips are natural and unpuckered, so you're not going in with a kissy face, but you're keeping your lips unpuckered and natural and just going in nice and slow, meeting in the middle there, just maybe tilting the head slightly and maybe even having your noses make like an X shape. That's the moment I wanna capture right there. If we are doing a pose where, for example, it's more of a prompt and maybe you end up, your partner's like got their arm around you like that, and you know, you're just hanging out here. You can put your arm on them to create that connection. Connection and intimacy doesn't just mean that you like ram your bodies together as much as you possibly can. Sometimes that intimacy is something very subtle. It also means that there can be very small little points of contact that can be very meaningful and very beautiful in the final images. So one example of that, I love to do this one, is when I get one partner to nuzzle or like just kind of gently sniff at their partner's kind of temple. It isn't something that maybe you would do naturally, but it is one of those ones that actually looks really, really good. If that's accompanied with like a little um, touch of the other side right here, that can be a very uh, meaningful little gesture. Another great way of creating that intimacy is if you vary up where you're holding your partner. You could hold them at the waist, which is what we kind of do in the default pose, but we can also move that hand up so that we now are cradling our partner's face. When we do this, we're just using the very tips of our fingers just to softly touch the partners right here, the back of their neck, maybe around their kind of jawline or their cheek. Sometimes with connection, less is more, but I'll guide you through more of that on the wedding day. The next point is about keeping your limbs really loose. <laughs> And this one goes hand in hand with the first point about creating connection. So to give you an example of what I mean when I say loose limbs, I'm going to give you an example of what the opposite of that looks like and then we can kind of work backwards from there. Let's say our limbs were super stiff and straight. My arms are just gonna be kind of hanging out um, right at the front. Now, as you can see, this doesn't look great in the picture. So what can I do to create a bit of looseness in my limbs? First of all, with the legs, you can stagger them a little bit and make sure that each leg is kind of doing something a little bit different. So maybe 
one toe is pointing down towards the ground, perhaps one leg's going out in the front like that. My knee is bent so that you're not ever putting them straight down like this. There are a few things that you can do instead. Number one, you can put, uh, so first of all, you've got to put your, your arms around your partner. That's probably going to be your main sort of prop. We can put a hand in the pocket. This tends to work best for guys. So for example, you could have one hand in your pocket here and then the other hand around your partner like that or holding their hand like this. For ladies, it tends to be just resting on your thigh like that. The other option is to put it right on your waist. This has the added benefit and I've, I'm purposely wearing something a little bit loose here because some wedding dresses do have a bit more of a sort of slightly boxier shape. When you put your, your hand around your waist, just touch it to the thinnest part of your waist right here so that you're also cinching it in at the waist and you're drawing attention to the thinnest part of your waist, all right? We don't want to do the arm like really close to the body like that because then you are going to have a larger arm appearing here because it's pressed against the rest of you. If you if you just kind of loosen it up a little bit and just make sure you have a nice kind of curve in the arm, not so much of a 90 degree angle, but if you just kind of soften it a little bit, maybe pull it back this way, that's going to look a lot nicer in photos. Another tip for ladies uh, to do with your limbs is just to keep all of your weight on your back leg, so the one that's away from the camera. For most of the poses, you are going to be in more of a side pose like this than straight on. So uh, I'm going to make sure that my weight is on the side that's facing the back. The way that I can tell is that my front leg is completely free moving. Okay. So this is, this doesn't have any weight on it whatsoever. So I know all my weights back here. You can see how that's making me look a lot larger than if I simply change where the weight is to my back leg. Another quick thing to remember is the sort of default pose that I tend to put couples in. <laughs> If we are running around a lot of different spots and locations, I'll sometimes kind of put couples in the same starting position so that we're not starting from zero. We have something that we can go and do. That pose is um, the middle squished together. So you can see straight away, I'm turning my body towards, uh, sorry, away from the camera. So I'm now at 90 degrees to the camera. And what I would do here, we've already kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier, but we're going to put our bodies together. We're gonna to put our arms around our partner. From here, this is the pose, right? It's really, really simple. From here, here, what we can do is look towards our partner. We can go in for a kiss and then we can also look towards the camera. There's three kind of quick things that you can do from there. Also like really vary up by like our temples parallel to each other. We can also like rest on our partner here. We can also put a hand on them here. We can also change where our hands are making that connection. So we can now go and cradle their face right here. All of this essentially from one pose. So that's what I'll call the default pose, not what some couples want to do, which is like looking towards the camera and starting like this. I'll very rarely take pictures of you from this kind of an angle. It will almost always be from the side like that. The next one on my list is movement. And this is a really fun one and it's not as prescriptive as many of the other things that I've talked about in this video. It's just the simple principle that the more you move during the shoot, the more images that you're actually gonna end up with. If you are, for example, in pose with your partner and you've got your arms around them like that, if you just hold completely still for more than a beat, once I've got that shot, you kind of are free to move. So if you were to, for example, move your hands or your arms kind of up and down there, them, maybe change a little bit what your legs are doing, maybe kind of vary it between getting in close and then backing out a little bit, kind of swaying a little from side to side as you go in. Hold me close. That's going to give a lot more photos than just doing one thing and keeping your limbs um, and all of the parts of your body completely still. Another point about the idea of movement within a shoot, when you are doing something, when you are engaged in an activity, even something as simple as just walking, you are, you're just like in your own natural zone, right? You're kind of having this moment where you're not self-conscious. It's way more awkward for a lot of people to stand there kind of looking at the camera, having to hold it for a certain length of time than it is for them to just, oh yeah, walking, yeah. You're gonna feel more natural and more comfortable when you do that. I'll kind of have you guys be a little bit more camera unaware for these ones, just holding hands, looking towards each other. You told me to walk this way. 
maybe to make things more interesting you're going to be swinging out and like coming together like that because when you're doing that kind of thing it makes for more spontaneous and real reactions and you're really letting your guard down when that happens i think that for many people they are kind of waiting for me to give them the prompt for the next thing then feel free to move around a little bit and also to take poses in your own direction uh, to whatever extent you would like which is actually my next point i think this one kind of deserves its own uh, its own bullet point <laughs> To take poses in your own direction means that if I'm suggesting something but it just feels a little weird or a little awkward or maybe you guys get caught up in a little private joke of your own, I want you to lean into that, right? And to not feel like, you know, we need to, we need to concentrate. The photographer's telling us something. I really want the people in front of my lenses to feel like themselves and to be free to express themselves however that looks like for them. A big, big part of the chemistry between two people is that private kind of language that you use to communicate, whether that is verbal or whether that is physical, I want to bring out as much of that as possible, right? As much as I try to make silly jokes and, you know, make people feel comfortable, of course, I don't have that same level of knowledge of like your own private world, right? I don't know the things that you share together, the, the inside jokes. And I really want to create an environment where you feel comfortable to just make each other laugh because like that genuine laughter is something that I cannot really replicate by myself even though i'm trying to get through a lot of poses i'm trying to move us around in a way that's efficient i also want to allow for you guys to really be yourselves to, to really bring your full selves and your intimate selves your vulnerable selves to the shoot and by the same token if any of the poses that i suggest do not feel comfortable to you perhaps they're too traditional perhaps they're too heteronormative if you're not a heterosexual couple or even if you are or perhaps the poses are too kind of hipsterish and too modern or maybe too goofy and silly the poses that I suggest are just suggestions okay and there's absolutely nothing that I attach to each pose like if you don't want to do it if it doesn't feel comfortable not a big deal we simply move on and if you have any suggestions that you'd like to make as we go through when it comes to poses or if you want to like tell me something about your relationship that's going to help me to find the right poses for you then please do I just want to make sure that you get the images that you are really really thrilled with okay guys that video was a lot longer than I expected it to be but I wanted to make this the sort of jumbo version of all of my tips that I would love to give to every couple at the beginning of the shoot typically I have to condense this into about three minutes um, and then we have to get started so I really hope that was helpful guys and I will see you on the wedding day Bye.